completed building the geometry for the model and assigning the physical properties, we'll now generate a field solution. And we'll use just the default solver settings. We'll go to Solution and Solve. And you'll notice that the, the two circles that had the volume currents assigned, they've been subdivided by a number of small triangles. And that's because we use the boundary element method to generate the field solution. I'll just show you if we go to the Solver Setup dialog box, the default setting is to solve, generate the field solution using the boundary element method. And the default is set to self-adaptive. So basically the program will create the mesh it needs, calculate any errors, refine the mesh, and generate the field solution. So with the boundary element method, you only require a, a mesh inside regions that have physical properties such as volume currents or if they have nonlinear materials. Otherwise, you would have boundary elements, which we'll show you in a later sample session. But for this simple model, where we only have current carrying coils and there are no ferromagnetic or permanent magnet materials, the only mesh we required is the subdivision of the current carrying regions. So now we've generated the field solution, let's proceed to do some quick analysis. One of the, the quickest ways to see if you've assigned everything properly is just to create an arrow plot of the B field. We'll just generate a quick field plot. You'll notice that we have the arrows of the magnetic field in the region on the axis of the coil. They're very uniform in color and they're all pointing in the positive Y direction. Now that's consistent with the volume currents that we assigned. In a rotationally symmetric model, we assign the currents using the right-hand rule. So basically when we assign a positive currents, that's as if the currents are circulating around the y-axis. And if you think of the right-hand rule, that would produce a magnetic field in the positive y-direction. That's a very quick qualitative check on the solution. For a more quantitative result, we'll do a graph of the B-field Y component, and we'll do it along the axis of the coil, right in the center. So we'll do a graph along a line, and the command line is asking you for the starting point of the line. And let's say we'll start at X equals 0 and Y equals 10, and hit the Enter key. Okay, now, we could also have done this by freehand. You notice that right up at the top of the workspace at uh, coordinates 0 and 10 of the first point, we could have just entered uh, any points using the mouse. But I'll continue entering using the keyboard. The end point of my line will be 0 and minus 10. And you notice an autograph window has opened up showing the Y component of the B field along that line. And also, I'll show the auxiliary axis. You notice here again we have our, our line. It went from x equals 0, y equals 10 for the first point, and the end point is at x equals 0, y equals minus 10. We also show the third coordinate z equals 0, but that's uh, not really applicable for this model. And you notice that the B field is extremely uniform in the region between coils right in the center, which is the property, of course, of Helmholtz coils. Now whenever you see a tooltip, if you right click, that displays a menu which you can use to analyze the graph further. We'll do a differentiation of this graph, calculate the derivative. Okay, now this shows you the derivative of that graph, and once again you'll notice that uh, the derivative goes through a sort of a point of inflection, it's zero right at the center, and of course that is a defining characteristic of Helmholtz coils that we would expect. Now one last thing I'll do, I'll create a contour plot of the Y component, and we'll do a very fine density and add a few more contours and we'll create that plot and I'll also make that solid and we'll put a scale uh, actually perhaps it would have been better to have fewer numbers and I'm going to restrict the range. You'll notice that in the center of the coils it's very uniform you have very large positive values are indicated by a red color, large negative values are indicated by a blue color, and the largest values of the field are, of course, in the vicinity of the coils themselves. We'll restrict the range of our plot from 0 0.0095 to 0.0105. To remove that scale. So here what we're showing is that within the region shown 
wherever there's color here, that means that the field is between 0.0105 Tesla and 0.0095 Tesla. So where you make the transition from a red to a right region, that means the field is higher than this maximum value of 0.00105. Now wherever there's a transition from a dark blue area to a white area, that means the field is weaker than 0.0095 Tesla. So this is a very good indication if you wanted to find out in what regions of between the coils you'd have this uniform field, you can examine it using the contour plot.